Greetings to all of you. I am Jay Ramanan and this is my wife Brinda. Today we will be sharing photographs and nuggets of information of the Southern Western Ghats with all of you in this presentation, the monsoon mountains of Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka, the lifeline of the South. We are both very happy to be participating for the second time in this webinar organized by the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. I am a practicing architect, a photographer, exhibitor and an associate member of the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. I am a Bharatanatyam dancer. Ramadan and I have been trekking in the Himalaya and in the Western Ghats for the past 45 years. We completed our basic and advanced courses in, the, in mountaineering at the Nehru Institute of Mountaineering Uttarkashi in the 1970s. We have authored many coffee table books. 150 million years ago, India broke away from Gondwana, moving at an average speed of two centimeters per year. It moved over a very deep volcanic hotspot believed to be near the Reunion Islands. The heat of the volcanic activity deep in the ocean produced basaltic magma, causing India's crest to arch, creating a highland called the Deccan Plateau and the continuous range of mountains bordering the coastline of the Arabian Sea in the southwest of India called the Western Ghats. The Himalayas in the north and the Western Ghats in the south are two very important natural and national heritages that nature has bestowed upon us. This 1,600 kilometers long and 100 kilometers wide major mountain range known also as the Shayadris encompasses six states, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu and starts south of the Tapti River culminating at Kanyakumari in the southernmost part of India. It has been called the girdle of the earth. Today in our presentation, we will restrict to the southern part of the Western Ghats that includes the Nilgiri biosphere in the north with the Mukuruti Tiger Reserve and the Vayanad in its confines, the Silent Valley, the Anamalai Tiger Reserve, the Erivikulam National Park, the Periyar Tiger Reserve, the Kalakad Mundandurai Tiger Reserve, and the Cardamom Hills near Kanyakumari. These are all located in Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. The Western Ghats are also known as the Monsoon Mountains. The cycle of the monsoon started 10 million years ago when Tibet reached an altitude of 15,000 feet. In summer in the month of May, the moisture-laden winds emerging from the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal act as fire tenders and rush towards the very hot Tibetan plateau to cool it down. The eastern arm from the Bay of Bengal is checked by the Himalayas and falls as rain in the northeastern parts while the winds blowing from the Arabian Sea collides with the Western Ghats and there is rainfall in the states on the coast. This is the southwest monsoon. They continue traveling to Tibet, picking up more water vapor on their path, and the monsoon arrives in the Himalayas in the months of July, August, and September. The mountain causes the wind to deflect over the Ganga Plains after precipitation, and the dry winds move to Tibet. The retreating winds move towards the Bay of Bengal, collecting moisture on the way, and the northeast monsoon takes place in the east coast in the months of October till December. And now we move into the lush green forests where slimy leeches abound. Western Ghats is older than the Himalayas and is one of the hottest hotspots of mega biodiverse life forms in the world. Hence, the Western Ghats, also known as the Great Escarpment of India, was declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here you can see the Ane Mudi Peak, the highest point at 8,843 feet in the Western Ghats, towering in the far background. Literally, it means elephant's head. This peak stands tall in the Erivikulam National Park near Munar and is considered to be the pride of Kerala. The landscape is replete with rolling grasslands and subtropical montane evergreen forests known as sholas. These sholas have outlasted the gradual climatic and ecological changes since the last glaciation many thousands of years ago. 
They are a mosaic of grasslands with stunted evergreen vegetation in the sheltered hill folds. The Sholas, considered as the mother of rivers, have a perennial stream running through them. There is a thick layer of humus that holds the water and filters it into the limpid streams. While the Himalayan rivers and streams are fed by the melting snow, in the Western Ghats, the grasslands and the Sholas act as watersheds feeding the perennial rivers. The grass act like a sponge and retains the water that they collect during the monsoon rains. During summer too, these never go dry. The water percolates through the forest floor and feeds the rivulets that meander through these grasslands. These join the main rivers that nourish the plains below. Sholas and grasslands are accepted as the climactic climax of the forest. The stream water the forests and in turn the forests protect the stream. Water gushes down carving its way through rock and stones making its way through the forests from the tops of hills to join the rivers below. It forms the catchment area for complex riverine drainage systems that drain almost 40% fresh water of India. The life-giving rivers Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Tungabhadra, Bhavani, Vaigai and Tamra Bharani are born here. This is the dark inside of a typical rainforest with the gentle rays of the sun trickling through the many layers of canopies. The fig tree is a main hub of activity and hosts many life forms. It is the keystone species that is responsible for supporting diverse forms of wildlife in and around its sacred confines. Though the forests appear to be silent, there is a lot of activity going on. These sacred groves shelter many forms of wildlife, micro and macro organisms. The southern part of the Western Ghats is home to nearly 10% of the world's tigers. This glamorous carnivore forms the apex of the food chain in our forest ecosystem. It is one of the most threatened species. The elusive Indian leopard always lives and rests on trees. They are typically found in tropical rainforests and deciduous forests. They adapt very well to the changing landscapes. The Asian elephant, Elephas maximus, here is an impressive tusker. There are about 10,000 elephants in Nilgiri biosphere in the southern western forests of the Western Ghats. Elephants are the most protective moms on the planet. It is believed that these elephants used to move to the forest of Arunachal Pradesh in search of water and food through the elephant corridors, but now they have lost to unscrupulous growth of settlements, roads, plantations, and hydroelectric projects. The Indian gar, Bas gorus, a large bovine also known as the Indian bison, the tallest species of the wild cattle, they depend on the grassland to graze on. Indian dole or wild dogs, the Kuan alpinus, this duo is creating a jugal bandi. They don't bark, they only whine. They live in packs. Here they are chasing a wild boar on a hunt. Samba deer, a large deer native to the Indian subcontinent, lives in small groups of three to five and sometimes alone. The chikal, axis axis, or the spotted deer are gregarious and is native of the Indian subcontinent. The endangered Nilgiri thar or the Nilgiri ibex and ungulate is the cousin of the Himalayan thar. This cloud goat is a state animal of Tamil Nadu and is endemic to Nilgiris. The grey lungo, also called the Hanuman lungo, a genus of the old world monkeys is native to our subcontinent. The endangered lion-tailed macaque or the wanderoo is a rare primate. It is endemic to the western gods. The Malabar giant squirrel Ratufa indica is a shy animal, wary of its predators. It is arboreal and is herbivorous. The near-threatened Malabar pied hornbill or the great Indian hornbill are exquisite birds. Predominantly frugivorous, but occasionally they feed on smaller mammals, reptiles and birds. When they fly or take off, the noise creates a flutter in our hearts, the wings whoosh, it is a non-migrant, sedentary bird. During the breeding season, 
The hornbill builds a nest in the hollow of a large tree trunk and seals the opening of its nest with a plaster made up of feces. She imprisons herself till her chicks are half grown. The male travels many kilometers to find figs for his mate, and which he feeds through a slit in the seal. They form monogamous bonds. Painted stalks are found around wetlands, in shallow waters, along lakes and rivers. They are migratory birds moving short distances due to change in weather for breeding or for food. These near-threatened Indian black-headed ibis are found in riverine swamps and marshland sanctuaries. It is a migratory bird. There is a non-callant crocodile relaxing in the water. A crested serpent eagle ready to feed on the snake it has just caught. The slow-moving green vine snake is an, in an agitated pose in the presence of a predator. They camouflage very well with the surrounding foliage and can be passed off for a vine. A nesting king cobra. This is the only snake in the world that builds a nest to lay its eggs. The king cobra, again, the longest venomous snake in the world. The Western Ghats has been acknowledged as a repository for a spectacular variety of amphibians. This blue-eyed frog is very tiny in size and is nocturnal. The rare Malabar gliding tree frogs, they are only found in the evergreen forests of the Western Ghats and are active by night. They make gliding jumps, leap to great heights and even climb up trees. They mate in congregations on trees, branches near rain pools. The female are big while the male are small. The Indian funnel spider endemic to the Western Ghats is found in the forests of Parambikulam an insect that resembles a leaf, the leaf insect. They live among leaves, feeding on leaves. Mating stick insects belonging to the same order as the leaf insect. The stick and leaf insects are referred to as phasmids. These migratory butterflies belongs to the blue tiger species. A bright colored member of the genus Impatiens, Popularly known as balsams, are referred to as orchid flowers as they resemble orchids. Wild flowers found growing on wet moss and spongy bark on trees in the rainforests. The rare Kurunji flower or the Nila Kurunji are endemic to the Western Ghats. Documented first in 1858, these purplish blue flowers blossom only once in 12 years. Nilgiris or the Blue Mountains earned its name from the Kurunji flowers that completely cover the hill, forming an enchanting blue carpet while in full bloom. Flowers of the rhododendron arboreum, cousins of the Himalayan species, are found only in the Nilgiris, Anamalais, and the Palani Hills of the Western Ghats. The gorgeous-looking Cyaniotis tuberosa, or the Abhali. Except for a few pockets, all of the Western Ghats, is not open to trekking, camping, or climbing. The forest departments of the respective reserve forests, sanctuaries, or national parks conduct regular trekking programs, adventure activities, nature camps, and jeep safaris in the buffer areas of the forest. They welcome researchers, scholars, and scientists to stay and study the ecology of the Western Ghats. The Western Ghats is under constant threat because of mindless and careless treatment according, according to it. This extremely fragile ecosystem faces many problems. Here you can see grasslands have been cleared for building holiday homes and this kind of unregulated construction causes hill stations to collapse. The rolling grasslands were replaced with tea and coffee estates making it an unsuitable for the endangered flora and fauna of the world. Large-scale mining operations have left the forest dry, causing pollutions to the river, destroying the complex habitat of highly endangered flora and fauna. Natural forests have been destroyed by felling of trees and planting teak, eucalyptus and acacia in the name of afforestation. The wattle tree or the acacia that is used by the tanning industry have devastated the original habitat of the endemic flora and fauna. No natural life form can grow or propagate anywhere around in the area. 
In contrast, the endemic shola trees, very vital to the forest, attracts diverse groups of plants and animals to sustain in and around it and the fallen leaves become natural manure. Due to continuous encroachments, ruthless cutting of the trees in the forest, these woodlands are drying up causing wildfires. The accumulation of plastic debris choke the rivers and streams of the Western Ghats. A result of thriving tourism, the plastic bottles cause great danger to the lives of the wildlife in these forests and streams get clogged. In the process of building dams for irrigation and power, thousands of hectares of natural forest area is destroyed, thereby displacing the tribal population, killing a vast number of endemic species and decimating wildlife. A dry and desolate landscape caused because of still silting. The influx of domestic cattle into the forest for grazing causes deforestation. Sometimes diseased livestock infest, infect the animals of the wild too. Poachers and smugglers cause havoc by hunting down elephants for their ivory tusks. All parts of the tiger, its whiskers, teeth, brain, flesh, bones, skin, tail, claws and even its blood is considered to be precious and hence they are in great demand fueling the black market trade. Reckless driving on roads running close to forests also are a threat to the wildlife that occasionally roam on the roads. With the phenomenal rise in the craze for wildlife photography, insensitive photographers lack knowledge of the ecology or animal behavior and will do anything for a perfect shot. An extremely fragile ecosystem, the Western Ghats need to be nurtured and protected. If our forests are healthy, there will be rain. Rain helps diverse forms of wildlife to thrive and this will contribute to the complete well-being of the mankind. We thank the IMF for giving us this fine opportunity to participate in this webinar series. Jai Hind!